laws and they don't honor that and la 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 la. But anyway, and they threaten to sue. Anyway, so we've taken all that out. So you're hearing this, so you're seeing this, um, and it may get cut off at any time because when we start talking, that's the part uh, YouTube and Vimeo and the other streaming services will allow us. Well, everybody everywhere, aren't you happy about the Arizona weather? Did you enjoy that two days of winter, Doug? I sure did, Corey Blaze. I, it was absolutely amazing, folks. We're talking about temperatures that were in the low 50s and the day topping out at the 70s. I'm telling you, it was absolutely beautiful. It was just two days of fall. Two days of fall, DJ. Two days of fall. Better get up. Two days of Arizona fall, and now we're back in the 90s. I mean, can Arizona just not hey, you, you, season? You left a little bit too early. I wanted to mention how the thunder was clapping like Jack Wire's booty cheeks. <laughs> Did you get storms this morning, oh, too? Oh, hella storms. I woke up to storms, too, and it was raining, and I saw my neighbor's cats were waiting under the bush they live in outside of our home. They were seriously waiting for the rain to stop so that they could run over to my yard and poop. <laughs> I'm kind of like a cat because when it rains, I try to get up under some bush too. It's oh. disgusting. And then they did. So I was coming home from making a run in the middle of the day, which was around the time that the <laughs> rain had dried up. So after you got done running. Right. Right. And I saw the cats just ass saddled up to my walkway up to my front door because they don't want to poop like on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. They want to go where they can make sure that everyone that ever visits me, mm -hmm. though far and in between, mm -hmm. because I'm friendless, yeah. smells all their excrement. So I did what any right thinking American would do. I grabbed my bottle of water spray. And just went out there and sprayed them off my property. And then they sat there and just looked at me like, why did you spray me? You, you know, Corey, as a former cat owner, may I suggest water with Listerine and Sriracha? What does water and Listerine and Sriracha do for stray cats? Well, you spray the cat, right, with water. Right. And the cat's probably just going to lick it off. Oh, so I'm just quenching their thirst is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, just quenching their thirst. If you spray Listerine and Sriracha on them and they're going to lick it, they're going to be like, uh, uh, and they're going to like it. Okay, them not. There's I do a lot of things to these cats that they don't like. Uh, yeah. But these cats are stupid. And then what they end up doing is that they end up having baby cats. And the baby cats, guess what they are, d -tay? They're stupid, too. <laughs> Have you ever seen a cat uh, penis? Stupid baby cats. Stupid baby cats. So then I've got a cluster of dumbass kitties. It's a cluster of dumbass kitties. Running around my front yard. So now i got to read. Now, the old school kitties that are out there that I didn't hit four or five times with two or three rocks, mm -hmm. those are the ones that when they see me or hear me coming, they hear the door open, they run, they scatter. But these little dumb, little ignorant, brand new baby dumb kitties, they don't know that. They stand there like, oh, it's playtime. No, it's not playtime. I'm about to punch your ass across the street, and you're going to land into my neighbor's yard. That's what's about to happen. And they just sit there. They bolt. They don't care. They just sit there and just stare at me like, oh, it's playtime. You got any catnip? No, mother effer. You fist to get up out my yard. That's how you know evolution isn't real. No, you have a, it sounds like you have an infestation of cataroaches. It's, it's cataroaches is what it is. And every time I turn on the lights, they scatter. Cataroaches. I like cats, so. You would. I do. They're really independent, like me. I really didn't plan on opening the show up with that, but it was at the forefront of my mind, and I'm trying to quelch my anger mm -hmm. right Well, since now. we're talking about cats, you kind of glazed over it. Have you seen a cat penis? No. They have hooks. So when two cats are making love, the one's not screaming because it feels good. She's screaming because it hurts, because the horns and the, and the hooks are clawing into her. Uh, DT? Would it be wrong of me to ponder how the hell he knows that? It would not be wrong. I'm kind of curious as well. So if he knows that a cat penis has a hook, mm -hmm. that entails he has actually seen said cat penis. Yeah. Time for break. Hey, <laughs> I'll catch you on the other side. No. no. Where's the music? No. Oh, okay. You don't kick the show off, you weird. Yo, the weather you can't is crazy. Say something like 
I know what a cat penis looks like because I've given a cat a job with my hand. I, I feel like <laughs> maybe he's been giving out letters to owners around his property. I'm thinking maybe the letters, maybe some initials of someone like Ben Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, Ben Johnson has a cat, Harvey Weinstein. Her penis. Mm-hmm. You you would Ben Johnson. The oh, hook. Ben Johnson. <laughs> the hook jewels. I didn't even catch that. The hook jewels, yeah, yeah. Ben Johnson. Yeah, the hook. Ben Johnson with the hook jewels. <laughs> hey, you, you good at this, man. Y'all good at this, man. Oh, I'm just learning from oh, the past. Oh, yeah, don't worry about writing that down, DT. That was funny. You came up with it. I give, got it. Give me a I don't have anything to write down with. <laughs> hook Johnson. One day, folks. Uh, you know, we, we we don't write this, guys. We got a two dollar operation here, and I think every time DT can't find a, a writing <laughs> instrument, it's it literally l- right next to him. It literally drops our operation down to like a dollar fifty. Bro, the pencil is right there, right there. I can't see. I got <laughs> I, I got iPads in front of my face. No, you like, got eyes on your face. Yeah, but the iPads mm-hmm. that I run the show with. Which you do not know anything about. Uh huh. You don't even know we have a show. Like, oh, we got a show today. Yeah, hey, 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 I'm, I just I'm, come. I mean, I just uh, make people mad all day. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and I, I'm Doug, and I know about hook cat penises. Yeah, because I, I, I hooked my cat's penis the other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on that note, it's not gonna work. Ah, it's shit. not time, bro. See, you don't even know the timing. You know what, Detail? You make a very valid point. You, when people look at your camera shot when they watch the show live that's not live on YouTube right now, you look like you're operating the Starship Enterprise with all of, the, with all of the tablets and stuff. D- DA, hold it because I'm coming for you next. You look like you're running the Starship Enterprise with all that stuff over there in your work area. Over here, you know, people can see my iPad and my screen, my microphone. They can't really see my laptop. They can't really see the voice transformer. They can't really see that, you know, the switcher for the cameras and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot going on over mm-hmm. here. It's not the Starship Enterprise that DT has, but I got a lot going on over there. Then we go over to DA shot, mm-hmm. and he's got a gumball machine and an air conditioning Okay, unit. hey, that ain't fair. I got a screen right here. And a cotton ball wind Look, chime. I got a screen right here that's at a camera shot. Okay, I have an iPhone right here that I have to run. All right, I got an HDMI. That's no, no. I got mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. phone in front of me that, that I have to yeah, run. Yeah, the phone that distracts you from being engaged in the show. I have a laptop right here where I'm reading everybody's comments. That you don't read everybody's comments because I can't tell you how many times I get told, "Hey, I commented and I didn't get it." When on. my eyes get dry, I have my eye drops. I wish you stopped yelling at us, I, DA. I was just looking at that. Too. Thank you. Like, Dang. You know, we're just going to put his microphone up his ass is what we're right. going to end up doing. Don't they, do that right now. I told you my bad gas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting that mic back. <laughs> that little slipped out. Don't make me laugh. Oh, that, well, I'm sorry. This is a comedy talk radio show, so you're going to be uh, prairie is dogging it, all day. Is it? Yes, ass. <laughs> what were you going to say, DT? I was going to let the ladies and gentlemen know that the screen that he for, aforementioned in his shot is yes. not even in his shot. It's is not. off. Right here. Yeah, it's off. It's but how off. can there's we prove no, that? There's nothing on that. How would you know it's not facing you? I know because I used to sit in your chair, Rube. <laughs> Rube. Rube. What's a Rube? You, you are. Like a Rubik's Cube? You are. I have so many sides. So you're saying that the microphone won't come back and stick it up your ass with, the, with a hook cat penis, right? It ain't coming back. It ain't coming back. All right. <laughs> Shoot. Hey, hi. Um, so let me explain to you what's happening right now. So the show is going on. We've started the show. Um, or we might be in commercial right now, but because we've been fighting a lot with YouTube and Vimeo and our other video streaming services, what we've done is we've taken out um, all of the cool elements like the intro, the bed music, the commercial breaks and all that other stuff. So while all that is happening right now, you're seeing this, and it's not the ideal way uh, we want to bring you the show, but it's the best workaround to keep the peace between us and YouTube and Vimeo, even though you know we are a broadcast entity and they don't recognize that. But I'm so tired of fighting with them about our music and the fact that we have an agreement to allow us to play certain songs and they don't honor that and la, 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 la. 
But anyway, and they threaten to sue. Anyway, so we taken all that out. So you're hearing this, or you're seeing this, um, and it may get cut off at any time because when we start talking, that's the part uh, YouTube and Vimeo and the other streaming services will allow us to give you. So once we start talking, I'll just go away and, and then I'll be back when we go to another commercial um, and you'll hear me say the same thing over and over. So it's not our fault. It's just the best way for us to keep the peace, you know, because we, we're peacekeepers here on Fat Guy Radio Show. And so, um, yeah, that's where we are. And that's why this is going on. So now I'm like you, just waiting for, you know, the show to come back on or to start or wherever we are in the middle of the program. And uh, uh, you got some nice stuff there at your house. Uh, so wherever you are, it's kind of cool. Just hanging out here in <laughs> video streaming land. Let's see. <laughs> Show's going to start, you know, eventually here. Uh, seen any good movies? Lately, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's even appropriate. Um, I'm going to go check and see if the show started. Um, and then I'll be right back. I'll, I'll just, just stay there. I'm going to go check and see where the guys are and, and then come back and probably say the same thing that I, I said because this pre-recorded video will re repeat itself. But I'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, yeah. A bit light on cheat. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of church every once in a while. Not at all. No, yeah, not a little all. bit of church there, boy. You don't know nothing about that Vicky Wines. I listen to Kanye West. This is Kanye West. This is Vicky Wines, you A face. Hey! As long as I got King Jesus. Hey! Live from Arizona, USA, and broadcast into 79 countries with over three quarters of a million downloads worldwide. Heard by the best fat netics. <laughs> Welcome to Arizona's home for hot talk radio. This is Fat Guy Radio Show. I'm your host, Corey Blaze, joined by Daniel D. Tay Taylor. What's good? And Doug the D.A. Andrew. Holla. And my little brother, DJ Little D. We'll talk a little bit about him a little later in the show, but yeah, he's, he's here in absentia. Absentia. Fat Guy Radio Show is an interactive show. Comment on our YouTube live, maybe not tonight. Tweet us your comments to add Fat Guy Radio Show. Best way to do it tonight. You'll also, uh, you're also welcome to get at us in the DMs. Search Fat Guy Radio Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And boys, the word of the day, the word of the day is promulgate. 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 It's a verb and the meaning to proclaim or make an idea wild, wildly known to put into effect as law or regulation. So I'll promulgate for Target sneak peek at their Black Friday deal. Also, their buy to get one free on video games, board games, movies, musics, and books. You can even mix and match them and still get buy to get one free. And I promulgate their free two-day shipping. And for all you military personnel, veterans, and their families, I promulgate you'll save 10% store-wide when you shop Target now through November 11th. I promulgate at Target where you can expect more and pay less. And don't, oh yeah, and don't forget to uh, visit FatGuyRadioShow.com. Hey, hey, don't long, 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 long. Oh, that's for Bill right there, my boy Bill. Little, little, little church. Little church. Little Take church it. right here. Wow. Hey. I'm sorry that the live stream people ain't getting it, but hey. A mother when you're motherless. I know, right? All right. That's kind of that's kind of been my anthem all 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 the last couple of weeks. You've been well, going through motherless. something, guy. You've been motherless when you're motherless. I am motherless when I'm motherless. But long as I got King Jesus. How do you feel about Kanye releasing that um gospel CD? I don't know. It's been a lot on Twitter. He's been popping up on my Twitter feed and trending mm -hmm. a lot about the Church of Kanye and stuff like that. And you know me, I invest zilch in mm -hmm. Kanye. Yeah. 
Or what about the Kardashians? You invest in them? I don't. I don't invest the Kardashians at all. When wow. I see the Kardashians TV show show up in my um, Cox on demand feed or my Cox guide, mm. I'm gonna throw my remote at my TV. I will say this though. This though, you just did. Touche. Um, Chris Jenner is more. She's more skilled and has better parenting skills than Joe Jackson. Well, on that note, folks, I've got breaking news whenever it feels like breaking, boys. What is that? KFC's brought back their hot wings. (sighs) Really? Yes. I didn't know they had hot wings, and I didn't know they took them away. KFC's brought back their hot wings. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Last night, I went and got a five-piece Nashville hot chicken tender. Oh, at camp at the Cuffsk. At the Cuffsk. Oh, y'all this. And, and you know we have a Cuffsk in our. Well, it's not really in our neighborhood. It's near us. Which Cuffsk did you go to? Did you travel all the way down the Thunderbird Boulevard, or did you go up to Nineteenth Avenue? I went to the the one on the thirty fifth and Thunderbird. The thirty fifth and Thunderbird is the Cuffs near us because the, the, we only have two in this area because a lot of people in the northern area they like their life so they want they don't want to eat unhealthy. Yeah. We don't have a lot of KFCs and we have no. Church's chicken. Uh, there, no, you got to go all the way down the 35th and Cactus before you hit a church. Y'all talking about KFC hot wings when Popeyes brought the chicken sandwich back? I didn't even know nothing about no KFC hot. Dude, wings. do you not listen to this show? No, because I did a whole expose on the fact of why I developed my love for what is it, Wing Street or Wing Stop? Yeah. I developed my love for Wingstop because I was on the search for a hot wing after KFC removed their hot wings off of their menu. I talked about it ad nauseum on this show. He did. Ad nauseum? Yes. Damn. Yeah, I don't listen. KFC has brought the hot wing back. Yeah, and the Nashville hot chicken tenders. And they have the Nashville hot available in In the the hot hot wing wing. as well. And I know KFC has nothing to do with with this show, but good God of gravy, I'm really happy. So that means bye, Wingstop. Yeah, it's 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 12 herbs and spices now. Ah, and they're so delicious. I like to get them, they call it dry. Before uh-huh. it used to just be the KFC wing. Yeah. But now it's, uh, they just call it dry. Like yeah. a dry rub. Yeah. They just, yeah not to be confused with a dry tug. Meaning, no, not a dry rub, meaning that it, it's not sauced. Yeah, that means there's no sauce on it. Yeah, a dry rub. Right. No. There's no rub or anything. It's just hot. Really? Like, no yeah. flavor? No, it has flavor. It's hot. Really? Yeah. I'm going to try it. That's what we're trying to tell you. I don't like KFC, though. No, nah, you'd rather go to nasty ass uh, Popeyes. Popeye. Popeye's delicious. No, Bushes is that place that he was. Yeah, that, Bushes is Bushes good. Was, Bushes doesn't have a I'm hot sorry. wing. Bush could barely be a president, let alone make <laughs> chicken. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bush was a great president. Uh, you just want to play in Bush's, D.A. That's the only reason why you like Bush's. Yeah, right? yeah. And I'm big criticizing of them, and I never had them before. I've never had Bush either. I do want to try them, though, yeah. because there is one in, in, in our neighborhood. I like the sound of that. And I'm, and I'm actually there now. Like, do, you stay, do you stay by Bell? Who? Do you stay by Bell? Do I stay by Bell? Yeah. Bell is within driving distance, if that yeah. makes any sense. Because, yeah, that's where it's at. It's on Bell. and It's like, in the Arrowhead Mall area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I t- I, you really don't listen to the show. Oh, you live around there? So, back to this uh, Nashville <laughs> hot. Yeah. I, I, he, the he, pickles. He, the pickles that come with, that come with it. It's the pickles that you need to cut through the heat, and they just really accentuate and add that and acid they, and, and, and that salt you need. Just to... Just the right amount. They, not too many pickles to where you feel over pickled, and not enough to where you're like, oh man, I wish I had more pickles. No one wants to be over pickled. I know. This one time in college, man, Shut I was like last up, on that train Doug line, and I was damn. like, oh, these pickles. Shut up, Doug. Damn. <laughs> I'm over pickled right now. I wish you were over pickled. <laughs> Your finkster muscle is over pickled right now. <laughs> I'm surprised y'all don't smell that yet. Because <laughs> y'all started talking about food, and my stuff is like, uh uh-uh. uh. And the biscuits? The oh biscuit. Now, you know what? I'm not down on the KFC biscuit. I don't think I've, I've ever had I'm, a KFC biscuit. I'm actually biscuit. not a fan of the biscuit in general. Right, right. I'm with you. But with the KFC Nashville hot, I don't know. There's like this juice in there. It, 
the biscuit sops up. That that like residual oil that's at the bottom yeah. of the I mean, this is a fat this yeah. is the epitome of fat guy radio. Yeah, y'all talking about black people cookies. Because this is that oil, that chili oil or what it's not grease. Yeah. It's not fat. It is some type of oil that the KFC puts on you know what we need a KFC representative to come on this show. We do. I really want to get into the minutia of KFC because I'm a, I, that's the one thing that I go to KFC for. I like their chicken. Believe it or not, I've said it on the show, DA. I'll, re, I'll remind you now mm-hmm. because you don't listen. Mm-hmm. I'll take KFC over churches any day. Yeah, that's I love KFC's original chicken. Okay. I, 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 I will t- I will take now it's the worst thing to possibly eat sometimes. That probably just ruined the fact that KFC is gonna come on the show now. But like if you're trying to watch your diet or whatever, yeah. KFC is not the is they're not on they're not keto approved. Nah. Hell I, no. I will say that. Church's chicken, the thing I go to churches for is their tenders. Yeah. Tenders and white gravy. Oh, I can white tender gravy. I can tender and white gravy any day of the week. Y'all need bushes. I actually swiped right on the gravy. I would swipe. I would swipe. I would swipe right and send my phone number. Yeah. In a private message. Are we still talking about chicken? We are still talking about chicken. And okay. if you were a professional fat guy, you would understand. I'm a moment. professional fat guy. Clearly, you're you were talking about black people cookies. The best black people cookies is that Red Lobster. Nobody said anything about black people cookies. What's a black people cookie? A biscuit. That's not a black people cookie. Yeah, it is. It's not. I swear. What's a black people cookie then? There's no such thing as a black people cookie. Google it. No. Because I'll probably bring up some black woman that's sitting there playing with her cookie. Here's the thing. <laughs> Ooh, Google it. KFC brought back the hot <laughs> wing, and I'm all in, and I'm doing my best not to be at KFC every other day to get these hot wings. The only thing is, is that the price point is a lot higher than it was before. Yeah. They up to about a dollar a wing. Yeah, see, the way my wallet is set up, I haven't been able to really get into the the Nashville hot tenders the way I wanted to right and you it's gonna be a while for you and this is always the case when you move into a brand new place you yeah. know what I'm saying and that's the frustrated aspect of moving into a brand new place because you have all these ideas of stuff you want to do yeah and then you can't do it you know. because you don't got the moolah Mm-mm. since we're talking about chicken too I tried a new chicken spot okay ask me where Ooh. where Harold's Chicken. Who? It's like a popular Chicago chicken spot. We ain't in Chicago. We yeah, in Phoenix. I know. They built one in Phoenix. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to chime in real quick. Harold could barely be a friend of Arnold. How do you make it your <laughs> chicken now? You talking about Hey Arnold? Yeah. <laughs> like, he can barely control that uh, high top fade he had. I how, love that show. How is, he, how is he making chicken now? I'm going to go even further back. I don't know how Harold could make chicken now. He was a pig on Green Acres back oh. in the 70s. Oh, I remember Green that show. Green Acres is the place to be. Yeah. Far lemon is the life for me. Why did you stop? I thought we were singing. No, we weren't. You were over there making noise. Yeah. I was singing. <laughs> Why are you being a, protag- a protagonist a-hole today? Well, cause the I a- almost got dumped. Because my, my a-hole is like. Is that what's making you? Yeah. So basically, no. you're no. full of it. You're full of S. Uh-huh. So you're giving us S. Yes. But it's like that all the time. I'm trying to to elaborate on the conversations that we we're having. No, you're trying to railroad no, the conversations I'm not. that we You guys we're are talking having. about chicken. I said, yo, I tried some new chicken spot. We I were thought talking you about care. chicken and you started talking about some some Negro cookie. I'm going to Google it. Nobody knows what a Negro cookie is and why my fat butt can't sit in my chair today. All them Negro cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much right now. All right, we're going to take a quick break right here, folks. And on the other side of this, man, I wish we let celebrities rest in peace. Some news broke today about a major celeb, and it's just it just really got me to thinking and frustrated the snot uh-huh. out of me. Stick around for this, folks. We'll be right back on FatGuyRadioShow.com. Oh, hey, hi. Um, so let me explain to you what's happening right now. So the show is going on. We've started the show, um, or we might be in commercial right now, but because we've been fighting a lot with YouTube and Vimeo and our other video streaming services, what we've done is we've taken out um, all of the cool elements, like the intro, the bed music, the commercial breaks, and all that other stuff. So while all that is happening right now, you're seeing this, and it's not the ideal 
way uh, we want to bring you the show, but it's the best workaround to keep the peace between us and YouTube and Vimeo, even though, you know, we are a broadcast entity and they don't recognize that. But I'm so tired of fighting with them about our music and the fact that we have an agreement to allow us to play certain songs and they don't honor that and la, 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 la. But anyway, and they threaten to sue. Anyway, so we've taken all that out. So you're hearing this, so you're seeing this, um, and it may get cut off at any time because when we start talking, that's the part uh, YouTube and Vimeo and the other streaming services will allow us to give you. So once we start talking, I'll just go away and, and then I'll be back when we go to another commercial um, and you'll hear me say the same thing over and over. So it's not our fault. It's just the best way for us to keep the peace, you know, because we, we're peacekeepers here on Fat Guy Radio Show. And so, um, yeah, that's where we are. And that's why this is going on. So now I'm like you, just waiting for, you know, the show to come back on or to start or wherever we are in the middle of the program. And uh, uh, you got some nice stuff there at your house. So or wherever you are, it's kind of cool. Just hanging out here in <laughs> video streaming land, let's see. <laughs> Show's gonna start, you know, eventually here. Uh, All right, folks, hey, let me tell you about Home Depot. Good Lord, I love me some Home Depot. If you have something to do around the house, and this is my time of year, where I like to do things around the house because it's a little cooler outside, not even just around the house, even outside. Um, I have, it was so funny because my lemon tree, I finally took it down. My dead lemon tree that was in my front yard. It died a long time ago because you know what they say, d -Tay, lemon trees are dying right. these days. It ain't died That's before. <laughs> so I took down the dead lemon tree with my, with my old ass neighbor, Barney Fife and Betty White. And I think they really wanted the tree down more than I did because I really didn't care. And it was just before Halloween. And I'm like, we'll just leave it up and scare a couple of kids. Yeah. But I decided to play into them and say, you know what? Let's get together as a neighborhood and take down this dead tree that I swear the cat urine killed. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So we up and Bob, uh, my neighbor, I said his real name, Barney Fife. My neighbor had uh, little itty bitty little tools like we was about to cut down a like, we were about to trim up a bonsai tree. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, this dead tree in my front yard is, like, 20 feet tall and, you know, six feet around. We're not going to be able to take this tree out of my yard with your bonsai tools. Yeah. So I headed over to Home Depot, picked up a chainsaw, rented a chainsaw. Yeah. Um, and also got a couple of those long extended shear thingies that mm -hmm. you – that you clap together and it nips off the branches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Picked up some gloves that were pervious to the little pricklies because lemon trees have pricklies on them, you know? Yeah. And so once we got the tree down, um, I have to go back and rent the, gr the stump grinder. Okay. So we've got a little stump there, but the lemon tree had its own little well of dirt. And the cats in my neighbor's yard comes over and uses that as their bathroom as well. So what I did is I took some of the branches from the tree, some of the prickly branches from the tree that I took down with my Home Depot saw, my Home Depot clippers, and I built a little cat boma. Ooh. You know, a little boma like you build in Africa to keep the wild animals out. Wild animals don't like to cross anything that pokes them. I'm yeah. surprised you knew that. So I built a little cat boma around the base of the, the, the remaining stump of the tree. Nice. And I wouldn't have been able to take that tree down with Barney Fife and Betty White without my Home Depot. And, oh, yeah, visit FatGuyRadioShow.com when you get a chance there, folks. All right, welcome back to the show, the whoa, whoa, whoa. Is a stump grinder a real thing? Stump grinder is a real, a real thing, and I think it, it probably don't even need a stump grinder. I thought about it after I returned the chainsaw, where I probably could have used a chainsaw to uh, dig out the stump, but I didn't want to do it because there are so many layers of weed blocker fabric that's around the stump. Yeah, And I was afraid that if I used a chainsaw, it would probably catch hold to one of those weed blocker mats, and then that would get tangled up. That, also, you don't use chainsaws on palm trees, and that's something that a lot of people in Arizona should know. You don't use chainsaws in palm trees. Palm tree, palm tree fibers, uh, if you live in a region where there's palm trees aplenty, 
you do not take those down with your off the off of the shelf saws. Why? You have to have a special chainsaw because of the fibers inside of a palm tree are so fine, they will jam up and blow out a off of the shelf um, chainsaw. chainsaw. Oh shoot! You have to have a special chainsaw. That's why here in Arizona, because we have palm trees everywhere, yep. and they grow like weeds out here. Um, there are landscapers that actually specialize in palm tree removal because they have to have, and they're expensive. Palm tree um, um, chainsaws are extremely, extremely expensive because they have to be able to cut through and separate all of those fine fibers. And that's the reason why palm trees can survive tornadoes and hurricanes and our monsoons. Mm. Because if they sway to the left, they have fibers that hold them to the right. They sway to the right. They have fibers that hold them to the left. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why palm trees survi- can survive the most horrific. Um, that's why you can see on the news sometimes when hurricanes hit down in the East Coast, you can see palm trees like almost at a 90 degree angle. Mm. Because as long as they've got a strong root system, they're not going to snap and break. Very few times do they snap and break. And if they do, they're most likely on their way out anyway. Um, yeah. God well, destroyed my palm tree. You are a palm Rightf- tree. Right- rightfully so. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've been trying to. I was waiting for you to. Get I know, started. I saw it too, and I was trying to end it up, and then I started nerding out. And I, I didn't see so, it. So, shut up. Anyways, <laughs> um, Doug, damn. Shut up, Doug, damn. So, AK 47. AK 47. Just reached out to me. Oh, personally, directly? Yeah. Oh. And this is the message I just received. I'm seeing it in the chat. Oh. The betrayal is real. Ooh. The betrayal is real. Does this need, like, some accompanied betrayal music? You think it needs yes, some betrayal? Yes, let's, let's Okay, go let, ahead. let me find some betrayal music because the pre- the betrayal is real. And, you know, AK-47, she's been getting a lot of run on this show lately because she even went after me online. All right, the betrayal is real. I'm sitting over here like my YouTube is broken. Mm. They lied to me. There's no Wednesday show. All to mosey over to Twitter and find y'all. Mm. Mm. Is this because I don't like Corey's bougie videos? Oh. Boo- I told you they bougie. You kiss my bougie ass. Uh, a lot of kissing. It is not because you like my you don't like my bougie videos and my bougie videos. Will, you better be lucky, AK-47, that I'm busy. Hey, hey, hold on, I got this, Corey. AK-47, look, I'm not going to have you <laughs> coming on Twitter and not following me at Shut Up, Doug Damn. No, nah, you know what? Matter of fact, everybody unfollow at Shut, Shut Up, up Doug, Doug Damn. Damn. I'll be waiting for the notification. Of Go course. ahead and follow at Shut Up, Doug, he's quiet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at Shut Up, Doug, get out. Uh, here's no, the thing. that's not me. At shut up, Doug. Fired. <laughs> At shut up, Doug. Damn it, hell. <laughs> almost got dumped twice. That's twice. I haven't been pushing, dumped in a minute. He's pushing me to that limit, and you was a lie. Push me to the edge. Um, AK forty seven. Um, glad you found us. Hey, glad you're there. Welcome Waiting for back. the follow. Uh, we're happy. Please don't follow Doug. Matter of fact, everybody that does follow Doug, unfollow him. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even think I follow you. I think you. No, you don't. Unfollow Doug and follow at after the levels. Yeah. Ding. Uh, AK-47, you are absolutely right. It is not, um, it wasn't intentional. And I was telling the guys before this, pull the curtain back just a little bit. I was saying, you know, we did a whole lot of pushing that we were going to be on YouTube Live. And then we open up our YouTube Live software and we get an error that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And the error wasn't notified. We didn't notice the error until we decided to hit the button to go live. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, everybody is tweaked, is freaking out in my Twitter feed as well right now. So you're not the only one, AK-47. But it wasn't. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that your YouTube is broken. And yes, it has everything to do about about the fact that you called my videos bougie. (laughs) It's a personal attack on you, AK-47. And I'm gonna stop talking a whole lot of crap because she's really, really close to where we are right now. Uh Oh, right. So our hearts. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Boys, um, we've got to start. To let these dead celebrities lie in peace. Oh, who dug up who? Whitney Houston's best friend wrote a book, released a book, claiming that her or giving um I, how I want to put this eloquently. Okay. 
Um, Whitney Houston's best friend is on a book tour. She wrote a memoir in which she implies her and Whitney had more of just a friendship. I don't get what's ins- insinuated. If you weren't on your phone, you would have heard me say that she is ins- implicating that mm-hmm. her and Whitney had more mm-hmm. than a friendship. And it has gone as far as physical between her and Whitney. But then Whitney called it off right before she signed with Clive Davis. Oh, so they had like a relationship. Yes. So this is going all the way back to, oh, I want to dance with somebody. Whitney. Oh, that's waiting to exhale. Uh, Before waiting to exhale, Whitney. We're back in the 80s with this situation. But here's the thing. Um, Okay, fine. If If this was a situation that, uh, you were friends with Whitney, and you had more of a relationship. Okay, you didn't feel that that was important to say when Whitney was alive, because this is my conclusion. You didn't feel that was important to say when Whitney was alive, because Whitney was feeding you. Mm-hmm. Now that your meal horse is dead, you want to still kick mm-hmm. that dead horse and try to squeeze every little dime out of it. That's yeah. how this reads. To me, so whatever happened to not kicking a dead horse? These people, like Whitney Houston's best friend, was fortunate enough to have something that millions of other people coveted. Millions of people would have loved to have been best friends with Whitney Houston. Mm -hmm. Same thing when it comes to Michael Jackson. I'll even go all the way back to Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. People would love to be these mega celebrities' best friends. So you're awarded that that opportunity in life. They die. Your meal ticket and your check goes away. Yeah. And so the only way that you want to try to keep that momentum going is now releasing a book claiming things that you know are going to garner people's attention mm-hmm. that are going to get us talking about it. Which we are. On the backs of a dead celebrity. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, just... You are the best friend to a dead celebrity. Get your lazy ass a real job now that they gone. Yeah. Didn't you have a real job before they became a celebrity? Probably not. How so? Okay, you said before they okay. before they before became before a they, celebrity. Yeah. They had they had some type of life. They had some type of 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 of, of income coming in. Be, you know, your celebrity friend dies. I find it so, like, it would be like if I passed away, which is <laughs> inevitable, mm-hmm. dealing with Doug. Especially all them b- <laughs> black people biscuits and chicken you be eating. I would be, I would, it, it would, I would not sit well in my grave if d mm-hmm. decides <laughs> to go out and rewrite a book about his and I's work shift. Yeah. If you want to do that, do that now so we both can benefit from it. Exactly. Don't yeah. ride the coattails of my quote unquote S list S list celebrity status while I'm dead. Man, Whitney wouldn't well, have benefited from that. And, and, and not only that, like, sorry to cut you off, Doug. Yeah, really not but, sorry. But though. you just did. Um, sorry, not sorry. But like, it, I don't even like you're taking it just like, oh, I'm gonna use your name to like, um, I'm waiting till you're dead so that I'm like can use your name so I can have like a meal ticket again off of your coattails. I also look at it is why didn't why wasn't this said while she was alive? Oh, because one of two things would have happened. One, she would have been cut off and everything would have been refuted right. and, and and shown that there was no ounce of truth to this. And two, she would have lost her best friend. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that your best friend is dead, that gives you the right to this this I don't know why, but this just has gold di- I'm gonna say it. Mm. This just has gold digging whore written all over hey, it. Hey, yeah. hey, hey. It just does. Because you, ha- Whitney's been gone for how long now? And it's almost just like those two those two boys that decided to do uh, uh, Leave in Neverland. Yeah. You wait 10 years till after Michael is gone for you to profit on, on your quote-unquote story? I mean, look at it like this. You know, Gail and Oprah. Let's say, God forbid, something happens to Oprah. And then 10 years later, Gail says, hey, actually, me and Oprah, the reason why her and Stedman didn't really go public is because we were at a thing. 
they are already together in public in the thing. But no, no, no. But, but if you're best say, friends with uh, some in a relationship, though, if you're best friends with somebody, no, your best you no, you don't. entrust your best friend with secrets. That's what you do. You don't entrust your those that that trust doesn't go away just because somebody's dead. Snoop Dogg told me don't trust anybody, not even your own mama. So I don't trust nobody with my secrets. You trust when you have a best friend. Mm-hmm. You trust your best friend with things in your world. You trust your best friend with experiences in your world. And just because one of you is dead, it does not give you an op- it, it's not opening media day for you to ex- a- 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 express or to profit from those things you were privy well, enough to have access to. Well, with her best friend gone, you know how they say steel sharpens steel, right? So Whitney Houston was the other side of that steel. So the scissor couldn't sharpen the scissors. I see what you're doing. You are disgusting. You are. <laughs> the scissors couldn't. Because there's claims of lesbianism, and he's making a scissory joke right now, yes. ladies and gentlemen, pushing the envelope. I don't think it's fair. It's I've, tr- I've, it is edgy. I've trusted. Hey, Bill. We're, I've trusted. I've trusted my best friend with things in my life mm-hmm. that I would hope that if I'm pushing up daisies, which is inevitable, mm-hmm. that's twice, she wouldn't come out and profit from those things that were shared or experienced between two best friends. Like your weight? That's <laughs> my weight and my age. Yeah, I really don't know your age. No one does. Exactly. My son I- thinks he figured it out too, and he just happened to trip over a fake driver's license. But nevertheless... <laughs> And here's the second ad. So am I wrong in feeling like this is yes. this is wrong? Yes. I'm wrong in yeah. feeling this way? Yeah. Ha- you, no. you haven't convinced me otherwise. All right. So the circle of life, right? One thing must die for another thing to live. That friend is eating off the dead caucus of Whitney Houston. The caucus? Wh- the caucus. Whitney Houston caucus does not care caucus? what Iowa that caucus. friend is saying. Iowa. The Iowa caucus. Whitney Houston wants that friend to eat, wants that friend to not struggle. So that friend is okay with what she's doing. Whitney Houston don't care. She's dead. She's dead. What what does she care about? We're going to remember some scissors. She's dead. A little palate cleanser. I smell beans. Your best friend's. You don't profit off of best friend secrets. And if she wanted to write a memoir that was addressing some of the public scandals of Whitney and stuff like that, and how she, her interactions with Whitney, because it was already a public situation, I'd understand that. But to bring out something that, if it is true, we'll never really know, but to bring out something that is as intimate as them having an intimate relationship, I think that that's wrong. Now, the second aspect of this, and I know we're up on a break, this makes me think, you know, when men are with women and the guys turn gay, the mm. women feels responsible. So, how does Bobby feel right about that? Hi. <laughs> right now, <laughs> if Whitney was, in fact, dipping on the other side. Bobby knew. <laughs> Bobby was with He had to because she was with uh, her best friend before she was with Bobby. But, I, yeah. you know. You That's know Ray J. I had to just take the, the – <laughs> Ray J hit it first. <laughs> <laughs> he did, though. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break right here. More fun and more thrills right here on FatGuyRadioShow.com, everybody. Oh, hey, hi. Um, So let me explain to you what's happening right now. So the show is going on. We've started the show, um, or we might be in commercial right now, but... Because we've been fighting a lot with YouTube and Vimeo and our other video streaming services, what we've done is we've taken out um, all of the cool elements, like the intro, the bed music, the commercial breaks, and all that other stuff. So while all that is happening right now, you're seeing this. And it's not the ideal way uh, we want to bring you the show, but it's the best workaround to keep the peace between us and YouTube and Vimeo, even though, you know, we are a broadcast entity and they don't recognize that. But I'm so tired of fighting with them about our music and the fact that we have an agreement to allow us to play certain songs and they don't honor that. 
But anyway, and they threatened to sue. Anyway, so we taken all that out. So you're hearing this, so you're seeing. All right, everybody, welcome back to Fat Guy Radio Show. This portion of the show is brought to you by Afterburn, our bonus show. Listen, listen to me. Hello, everybody. It's Corey Bliss. I didn't want to knock on my microphone. Um, Afterburn. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but I'm telling you this right now, folks. Uh, this really is the single way to power this show. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to get into the details. Matter of fact, I will own Afterburn. Merry Christmas, everybody. Because mm-hmm. it'll be for uh, December. December's Afterburn. Why is December Afterburn episodes always the earth-shattering episodes? Was it December's episode 2018, the hard one, or was it January? It was no, February. It was, just, it was February. Is it yeah. took me that long to be able to talk about that situation? Yeah, February, this time it's personal. Oh, God. Well, December's, folks, this time it's corporate. <laughs> Damn it, damn it, damn it. Listen, I can't encourage you enough to get a subscription to our Afterburn show. Um, It's $3 a month, and I would, you know what? I will share just a little bit, pull a little bit back of the curtain, and I'm going to put the guys up on the screen because they're probably going to have a reaction to this. I would get that subscription very soon because in 2020, it may not be $3. And if you already have the subscription, I would suggest buying a second subscription and gifting it to a friend. Totally, totally. Dite, you don't know how much I love you right now. I mean, if these cameras and these microphones weren't on right now, I would take our friendship to the next level. That had to be the greatest line I have ever heard. You are absolutely right. It's the holiday season. Give the gift of afterburn. I want you. Burn burn someone you love. (laughs) We're burning for you. <laughs> write that down. That's a. That's a. That's <laughs> it's recorded, Doug. We ain't gotta write it down. Oh yeah, burn someone you love. After burn. I've done that. A this few holiday times. season, burn someone you love. After burn, it's burning, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all we're all, all all seriousness, folks. We really do need you to uh, patronize our patron account and get your subscription to Afterburn. And those of you that are subscribers to Afterburn, um, no changes for you. No changes for you. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, other than some um, some trinkets may be coming your way. Uh-oh. So if you are an Afterburn subscriber, I will tell you this right now. Please make sure that your mailing address is updated in your Patreon account because that's where we're going to be working from. Nice. Whoa, pull back the curtain way too much, yeah. folks. Wait, everybody just calm down. Well, they're in oh. the shower. <laughs> Not the shower curtain, the show curtain, you boob. Oh. You are so not, you couldn't theater if you tried. I'm sorry, look, I f- finish the bit. The bit's over, that was it. You saw oh. the, the logo come down. Oh, I haven't been watching. <laughs> I can't no. stand him. No. You, are, you have taken on the spirit of Little D tonight. Aw. That's not an aw moment, a-hole. No. Burn someone oh, yeah. you, you love, get though. D- DT is verklempt right now with your... A-holisms. Burn someone you love, though? That's a line. That's a t-shirt. That's a... Oh, sh- uh, the curtain, Corey! <laughs> the curtain! Uh, Talking about I can't theater. You can't... Just because you put your hand up like this. The curtain, Corey! What, what does that... What does that... When you put the hand up like that and you look at it, what does that symbolize, DA? What does it symbolize? It symbolizes the skull in Shakespeare. God dang it, he knew it. <laughs> For which play? A soliloquy. Whoa! Yeah, DT. Which play, D? Yeah, DT. No, no, no. Which play, Doug? Oh, oh, okay. Hamlet. All right. All right. Well, welcome back to the show, everybody. I hate it when he shuts me down when he's right. He gets every, you know, even what's, a blind. What's the line? Come hey, on, no, man. What's, what's Wait, quit moving the goal line. What, what's, what's the line? Quit moving, moving the goal, goal line, what, what man. Does he, what does he say to the skull? He says, oh, if I can get hard. <laughs> <laughs> It's even easier than that. Was I right? No. no. Won that April with his sh- short suit. Oh, wait. I know what he said. I know what he the said. The drought to March no, had pierced he said, the roots. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> it's no. to see or not to see. Because you ain't got no eyes, bitch. <laughs> he was really close, though. I like that. He was really he was close. Really close. <laughs> but hey, d- hey DJ. It's even- to E or not to E. <laughs> <laughs> to E or not to E. Sports. Here's the 
here's the thing. Um, even a blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while. Well, even a bro clock is right twice a day. <laughs> twice a day. Unless, oh God. unless it's daylight savings time. And that messed it up. And now it's wrong three times. No, it's still right twice a day because <laughs> an, analog, an <laughs> analog clock doesn't specify time zones. Your logic huh. is so skewed. He said three times. Three times. How your clock got 32 hours on it? <laughs> your th- your logic is, I don't know where, I know your brain is down in your butt right now and it's about yeah. to come out and go explode uh, in, in bathroom number two. Corey, sometimes I'm no, scared. No, 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 yeah, you should be. Because I brought two little me's into this world <sighs> and they're going to be indoctrinated by me. And my mind is a beautiful thing, but it's really delicate, right? I have met your beautiful wife, who is definitely scoring downward when she married you. Uh uh-huh, wait. And we are hoping and praying. <laughs> we are lighting candles and mm-hmm. saying um, Ava Maria in the streets, uh-huh. hoping that her genes yep, takes Mama over Mama Mama your beautiful children. Because if they have any view of the world, as do you, mm-hmm. I do not have any hope in the children of the future. Ah, yeah. It's, it's scary. It's scary hours. He just switches. Yeah. You, you got you to gotta take an angle, bro. You got to take an angle. And I, I, I was the one that brought up the angle. I'm going to be scared. Because, again, my mind is beautiful, but it's delicate. So one wrong string pull the wrong way. One wrong string pull. I don't know what I'd be doing. That's all I got to say. I'm glad. That's my angle. I am very, very glad. I'm like a palm tree, oh, right? Jesus Christ. I'm a palm tree, baby. That's all you have to say. I'm listening to the show. Man, this is one a bizarre adventure, man. <laughs> pay, pay, thanks you for that. Um, can I, can I, and, please, because I was and, trying to segue into something, and Doug just threw me well, off. Well, this is going to be to- – I don't even know what you're going to segue into, but this is totally uh, – I I just want to take like a quick two three minutes to talk about sports and yes. how how much I hate media. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna start the two. Uh, I'm gonna start the three minute clock. Before you start that three minute clock, can we just talk about women before that? Because if we said two minutes for sex, they're gonna be like, oh, two minutes. But two minutes for anything else is a long time, right? We can talk about a lot of stuff in two minutes, but when it comes to sex, oh, now two minutes is a bad thing. All right, so I'll go ahead and start the clock. I wonder if it hurts him to be him sometimes. I mean, it has to it has to be painful to get up every morning. Because I might fart. It's got to be painful to get up every morning and be Doug Andrew. I mean, I can understand it's probably easier to be, I don't know, Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Or Kamala Harris. You're talking about the president, but and the president it's, elects to be. It's got to be difficult to be Doug Andrew. I can't call by my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, that's hard. Are you I'm, ready I'm, for I'm the ready for, I'm ready for the transition. All right, the uh, ready for uh, sports talk. Uh, what would you say? Three minutes. Yeah, three. Four. Minutes. Three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Because that'll give Ashley King enough time to go follow and, me and get, and uh, get something to drink. At go. All right. I do not like oh. how social media will will take some like how bad social media and like mainstream media just mm-hmm. downplays. Arizona sports, mm. Mm. like like we are the redheaded stepchild of the sports world. Mm-hmm. Case in point, the Phoenix Suns are off to a an amazing Ooh. five and two start. Uh-huh. And two, baby. Took down um, the LA Clippers, who are slated to come out of the West and possibly win the whole thing. No doubt, depending on who you talk to, because the Lakers also are in that same conversation. Mm-hmm. And then beat the only undefeating team Sixers. in the Seventy Sixers mm-hmm. on Monday. No Joel Embiid, but cool. Now now. No, and that and that right there is a thing that I want to talk about now because they won the very next day. All social media was like, "Yeah, the Suns took down the Sixers, but they had no Joel Embiid." But previously, Saturday, they were praising the 76ers for beating a healthy Portland Trailblazer team by one point without Joel Embiid, and saying, 
this is why they are still 5-0 and oh, mm-hmm. because they can always go overcome their setbacks and beat tough, uh, uh, tough uh, opponents uh-huh. and people who are playoff bound. Now, here's a Suns team who's not supposed to win any games. None. And they come in and win. The Sixers beat the Blazers by one point. The Suns beat the Sixers. It was like 109 to 114. Yeah. And this is a team that's not supposed to be able to contend with the 76ers. And the first caveat they throw on this whole thing is, oh, there was no Joel Embiid. I'm sorry. I don't give two S's about Joel Embiid because he wouldn't have made that big a difference. We're playing with DeAndre without DeAndre Ayton, mm. which is a death sentence we were given. When you, the moment they gave DeAndre Ayton that 25-game suspension, everyone says the Suns will definitely not accomplish anything this year. Mm. And we've overcame. But yet we are not getting any Edens of any 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 small igni of credence, Don't and we also won some games without Ricky Rubio yes. on the court as well. Exactly, but are we getting any level of respect? No. Nope. And I feel like I feel like, I, I'm hoping. I know it's not until next Tuesday. I'm hoping the Suns demolish the Lakers. Mm-hmm. But then, no, I know you're a Lakers fan, okay, but I only hope that that we able we're able to beat the Lakers with LeBron and AD because then. I feel like that right there will solidify that the, the Suns stamp. are, mm-hmm. in fact, a team teams should be worried about mm. and no longer the butt of the NBA. I will say this real quick because we have 50 seconds left in your segment. I was actually moved to emotions when they when the crowd started chanting MVP at that last game because yeah. it immediately took me back to the days of the Steve Nash Suns. The yeah. run and gun Steve Nash Suns, that took me back, and I was literally sitting on my couch with tears in my eyes hearing those chants of MVP. Oh. And – I also cheered when we said ref you son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like like I said, and I, I totally agree with that. I, I feel like we have a good solid product and we are playing fundamentally fundamental basketball and I feel like we can win thirty games. We can win last year we didn't even win twenty, we won nineteen. Mm. But I feel like that is a much more attainable I, I will go so far to venture to say that we can even compete and contend for that eighth playoff spot. But right now, no one wants to give us any credit. And I, I get it. Seven games is a small sample size of an 82-game season. But this is a Suns game that didn't win their first game until December mm. last and, year. And we're working off of, what, 10 years of losing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're working with a completely brand-new revamped team. We only have five players that returned from last season. Mm. So that's my, that's my piece. Give us some credit. Mm. And that was DJ's Sports Corner. Hey! I felt the passion it was behind pa- that. Dude, and I know we're not a sports show, but I am with you 100%. I don't think the media has given us what we deserve. I don't think Booker is getting the credit that, that he deserves as well. And speaking as a fan of the NBA, before I was even involved with the Phoenix Suns, I was a fan first, and I say that at anywhere that I go. But I was literally moved to tears, getting verklempt in the eyes, watery in the eyes, hearing those chants of MVP. Looking at that crowd and seeing it grow. Yeah. Watch the fandom grow. Now we're gonna hit we're gonna hit, you know, a little slide. That's yeah. gonna happen. But what we're doing right now, if we stay even close to this trajectory, mm-hmm. this is going to be a contentual season. Yeah. This is going to be a contentual season for the Phoenix Suns, and no one has given us the credit. Because and here's the thing. I'm actually okay with it, DT, because that means we are going to become that slap-you-in-your-ass NBA team. All them teams that think they're going to just slide right into the playoffs, here come the Suns. We finna knock you off your playoff hope. Now, I do disagree let with us you. Be, let us be sleeper. We'll fi- I'm fine with that. And I do disagree with you on one point. Oh, DT, and this And this is the only point, because you said they don't give Devin Booker enough credit. Actually, I disagree with that. The thing is, is like if you really read the articles about the last Suns wins and mm-hmm. everything, they give Booker all the credit. Because he's stepping up and he's making big shots like he's supposed to. But the thing is, is Booker isn't getting double teamed as much now. He's not getting like he he's able to get the ball off the dribble now. And because the team is doing what they're supposed to, it's a team effort. The Suns are like um, second in points scored off of assists. Mm. And because of that, Booker's still able to maintain his numbers, his 30, 40 point games, because he's getting the ball off of assists instead of having to create his own shot. And they're giving it all. Oh, Booker dropped another thirty piece. Oh, Booker dropped another forty piece. Mm-hmm. And saying that's the reason why the Suns won. No, the Suns won because if you take away Booker's forty points, we're still in the game. 
You know what I mean? Like we're yeah. still we're we're not being blown out. It's not like Booker's making seventy points a game like the time he beat the Boston Celtics. Right. It's it's Booker's making what he's supposed to make off of our offense running the way it's supposed to. He was but even the, in foul trouble in the last game. Yeah, but the game we are not a sports show. I'm sorry. I, I know, everybody. but but the but the but the team is still contributing because Booker is assists are going up. Right. As well, and no one's talking about this. They're just saying Booker's scoring, and that's the reason why the Suns winning. No, the Suns are scoring the team. as a team. The so, team. question: Is the local Arizona media talking about this? Yes, that's all that really matters. No, yeah, no, yes, it is. No, no it doesn't. You're not going to get burned on ESPN when you have LeBron James, AD. You have bigger stories than once it becomes the Suns. something. Once it becomes something that uh, yes, we do, Lady K. Once it becomes something that um um. Once it becomes something that they should talk about, yeah, then they will play it off as if they've been talking about it the whole time. Well, and and, and and if you don't believe me about the fact that like they don't give us credit when the Suns beat the Warriors, when we broke the Warriors, when we, actually, when we beat the Warriors we broke in dramatic Nash. fashion, we broke Stephen Curry. Steph Curry was in there for the whole first quarter. Yes, and that's when they got that big twenty-nine point blowout or thirty-something point blowout in the first quarter, and we held them to like fourteen points. Mm-hmm. Curry didn't go down to the second uh, second quarter. If you watch the replays on SportsCenter or like any of the major m- news thing, the whole story was the Suns won after uh, breaking Curry after Curry broke uh, his wrist. Mm, yeah. The Suns win. Mm. No, the Suns was whooping that ass. Whooping the first that quarter. ass. And I hate to say it, I think Steph Curry took a dive. He w- he was feeling that heat. He said, I'm just going to land on my non-shooting hand and take this year off with Clay." He wanted to go home to Aisha. She was looking pretty good that day. But I'll tell you this right now, folks. We don't talk sports a lot on the show. But when DT be talking about these sports, I just can't be nostalgic but think about, you looking fine as hell today, boy! Telling me, yeah! All right, we're going to take a quick break right here, ladies and gentlemen, on the other side of this. Uh, if DA will allow me, I will tell you about what my kid is doing in college and why little D isn't here. I'll allow it. You'll allow it? Thank you. I didn't know it was Fat Guy Radio Show featuring Doug Andrew. No, it's <laughs> Doug Andrew featuring Fat Guy Radio Show. You are such a nudge today. Ugh. Hey, hi. Um, so let me explain to you what's happening right now. So the show is going on. We've started the show. Um, or we might be in commercial right now. But because we've been fighting a lot with YouTube and Vimeo and our other video streaming services, what we've done is we've taken out um, all of the cool elements, like the intro, the bed music, the commercial breaks, and all that other stuff. So while all that is happening right now, you're seeing this and it's not the ideal way uh we want to bring you the show but it's the best workaround to keep the peace between us and youtube and vimeo even though you know we are a broadcast entity and they don't recognize that but i'm so tired of fighting with them about our music and the fact that we have an agreement to allow us to play certain songs and they don't honor that and la, 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 la. but anyway and they threaten to sue anyway so we've taken all that out so you're hearing this so you're seeing this um and it may get cut off at any time because when we start talking that's the part uh youtube and vimeo and the other streaming services will allow us to give you so once we start talking i'll just go away and and then i'll be back when we go to another commercial um and you'll hear me say the same thing over and over. So it's not our fault. It's just the best way for us to keep the peace, you know, because we, we're peacekeepers here on Fat Guy Radio Show. And so- All right, welcome back to Fat Guy Radio Show. Everybody, everyone. Well, my baby didn't done it. What do you do? My little boy didn't done it. He has landed his first lead role in a film school project. Hey. Ooh. Yeah. Um, I'm just hoping that it's not porn. Why not? I don't need my kid being. No. Why? That 
is so close-minded. Cole, Why would I to want him to be in school bro. and be in a porn video? It, I, I know for a fact, number one, he, he's too prude. He doesn't like to see himself naked. Here's the thing. He was so excited about it. He sent me a text message saying that, hey, I got my first lead role. Yeah. Not, I mean, he's done a couple of projects. He's been in the back. Mm-hmm. He's been in the back of the house. He's been in the booth. You know what I mean? Uh, Booth and bones. Yeah. <laughs> now he got lines. And now he's got lines and he's in this film project. I'm just hoping he gets credit for it because he was in another film project. And it wasn't something that he got credit for. He was actually in the film project for another student for their credit. Mm. So this one, I'm hoping that it gets it gives him credit. Because, you know, you just, you just don't want to be known as one of those actors that work for free. Yeah. Yeah. If you're good at something, you don't do it for free. Yeah. That's real. Okay, I. That's why I don't have sex for free. Right? I'll go. Do you take checks? Here's the thing. I'm really excited, and I'm happy for him. I, I can see it written all over your face that thank, you're happy. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate your help. I he had you. a whole lot to say 45 minutes ago. Ain't got nothing to say now. I know, right? Right? I let out the poop. <laughs> you can't cough. He, he, he might fart. <laughs> already did. But I'm really proud of him. He's got um, his his uh, he landed his first lead role. Uh, Everybody is excited about it. We lost his mom for four days, but she has resurfaced. Um, What's the role? Do you know? No. Homeless number one. Yeah. No. Well, if it's lead, he'd be homeless. (laughs) Not right. But not number one. I don't know what it is. I was at work when he sent me these text messages down at the Canyon uh, University of the Grand. Oh. And uh, so I wasn't able to immediately respond, which I'm sure probably hurt his feelings, a little mm-hmm. sensitive feelings. He didn't get an immediate response from me. But mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, <laughs> there's nothing I can do about that. I responded when I was able to yeah. and told him that I was uh, really, really happy for him, which was great. And, you know, a lot of good news comes through text messages, and then a lot of bad news comes through text messages. Yeah. Like Lil D decided today to uh, damn near kill someone in a semi-truck on Bell Road in Tampa. Nice. Ooh. And I'm not breaking any news or blowing up his spot because he decided to put it all over Twitter. Damn, what happened? He claims, he claims, you know, my little brother always calling a question anything that he claims. Yeah. Because he's just a questionable person. Mm-hmm. I think he's a stand-up guy. You would. Mm-hmm. He claims that a dude in a little car, a little blue car, cut him off, turned out of the middle lane, made a right-hand turn out of the middle lane right in front of him. Um, in his in his eighteen wheeler, which I believe is actually a twenty four wheeler, he just doesn't tell anybody else about the extra wheels he has. Mm-hmm. Claims that he turned from the middle lane in front of him and tried to cut him off, and you know those eighteen wheelers they take a football field to stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know how fast he was going or whatnot. And he sent me the pictures, and and he sent me the pictures, and the first uh, text message that I got from him came in around three o'clock this afternoon, and uh, it had the pictures of the accident, and uh, I'm going to show the pictures, because I will explain why it's okay to show these pictures. Uh, but that was the accident between uh, the green is his semi-truck and the blue is the car. He tore that dude's side up. Well, according to him, the dude cut in front of him. Uh-huh. Um, and D- little D was very happy to send me the text message that says, well, I'm not making it to tonight, show." <laughs> That's my excuse. And, of course, I had to do the brotherly thing, and the first response is, oh, my God, are you okay? Where are you at? I'm on my way. Aw. Because that's the standard line. Yeah. yeah. And when he replied back, yeah, I'm fine. No reason to come out. Then I was like, are you going to jail? <laughs> I literally asked him that, are you being arrested? Yeah. Because it doesn't. there's not too many times where – You've got 28 wheels on a vehicle versus four wheels yeah. where you ain't at fault. And, uh, I, and I know how little D drives. There's some yeah. stupid drivers on the road. But and there's stupid truck drivers, too. But honestly, just looking at the position of that picture and the shape, like, I kind of believe the story. I kind of do, too, but I don't want to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. I do inspections for my numbers job, right? No, you <clears> don't. You said ass inspections don't count, DA. You say the guy cut him off and he was making a left? No. So little D is driving and the guy from the middle lane uh huh he is making a right hand turn. From the middle lane. So and, little and D was in the far right lane. So this is little D, this is the car that cut him off. Chest. Oh, okay. Damn. Yep. Yeah. And from that angle it does look like that's a true story. And I've seen cars cut. Like, try to make right-hand turns for the middle lane. Yeah. Why the hell do they do that in front of a semi? But I here's, don't know. But here's the wrinkle, though. 
and I'm not breaking any news because Lil D put this all up on Facebook. Yeah. Wrinkle it up. Because he just is an intention needer. Why would you put something like this on Facebook? Because everybody you, puts that on Facebook. You're at work, and you want to blow this spot up and put the situation on, on, on Facebook when there's still insurance claims that have to be reviewed. There's still insurance issues that have to be reviewed, lawyers that have to be involved, and you're putting out your part of the story on Facebook before any of that has happened. You're driving a multi-million dollar truck that hit a $3 car. You might want to play that close to the vest until the dust settles. Did he put the prayer hands in the post? Yes, the prayer hands were in the post. Oh, then, A, because I read this last night, if you have prayer hands in your post, you can't sue That's that person. That's not true. You. That's what that happened up. with Lizzo. You fabricated. The, the person she stole that from didn't have prayer hands. He put this up on his social media page, so I'm not breaking any news. I have a <laughs> massive headache, and it didn't start until... DT said we're going live, and Doug said hi. <laughs> mm. okay. No, no, no. I, I say holla. Do you even watch this show? So Lil D put all these pictures up on his Facebook page before it, and then he gives me, and then he has the audacity to give me permission to talk about it on the show. Oh, that's nice of him. Like, I need your story to fill 75 minutes on the show. So then, why I also poke holes in this story and his claims that this wasn't his fault. Mm -hmm. He says the guy that cut him off mm -hmm. fleed the scene. Ooh, he from Mexico. And that was the second question I asked him. I said, what part of Honduras is he from? <laughs> he says he's not from Honduras. He's from America. Oh, oh, he was oh. one of me, a Caucasian. An Anglo-Saxon. Oh, you probably ran when you saw Lil D. <laughs> he probably was scared of a black dude. He probably ran. This is, uh, Doug, you was a smart. Yep. The guy ran mm -hmm. because he knew if he stuck around in the scene, mm -hmm. he would have to bear witness to the fact that Lil D's little black ass stole that, that truck he just uh -huh. allegedly cut off. Uh -huh. And he didn't want to bear witness and have to go to court next Friday mm -hmm. because he's got to watch the kids. And... The Caucasian <laughs> probably didn't have no cheddar biscuits. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Sometimes, you know, Lil D has the power of stopping this show. Yeah. DA has the power of shutting me down mentally, and he's done it successfully tonight. Hey! That's not a win. Oh. That's not a win. Oh. No. So I poke holes in Lil D's claim. Yeah. Even though it does look like he was right. Yeah. And so, and I don't what, like it when my brother wins. And what, what was this dude? What was, the, what was the dude who ran away? What was his name? He was Anglo-Saxon. I just want to know why Kenny G's uh, <laughs> music instruments are driving cars. That's I, how magical his freaking <laughs> flute playing like, is. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah. I've, I've never seen an angled saxophone drive a car. <laughs> all saxophones are angled. And speaking to Kenny G, I'm glad you brought that up. Are you ready for Christmas music? Oh, yeah. It's on. KEZ 95.5. I think they're already playing Christmas music. Is it a little too early? Didn't we just ghost and ghoul last week? I, you, like, I thought I thought Christmas music wasn't start, supposed to start playing until Thanksgiving night. Nah, Black bro, Friday. Black Friday was supposed to be the launch. That means we're going to have two months of Here Comes Santa Claus. How many times can Santa Claus come? It's you, not even Christmas time yet. You didn't see Mariah Carey's uh, Twitter video? No. When she fell asleep in her costume and woke up in a Santa costume <laughs> talking about, it's that time. I'm about to get rich. <laughs> I saw that. That was, yeah. that was funny. But it, was it wasn't funny. funny because you brought it up, Doug. Uh -huh. It was funny because Mariah Carey's old. Man, she's fine still. Yeah, she, she's still holding is it down. She? Yo, bro. Hey. I don't know. I haven't, is she? I haven't seen her in a while. Is she? Hey, Nick last Cannon, time, he hit it first. Last time I seen her, she was looking toe up. Like, she got hit with a sack of nickels. Not a good way. No, it was it was a um, dollar store nickels. <laughs> Nick Cannon. Dollar store nickels. <laughs> dollar store nickels. Ray, I almost said Ray Cannon. Nick Cannon may have hit it first. How can you have dollar store nickels, Corey? But Eminem dry humped it first. Oh, dollar store nickel ho. Here's the thing. The, um, <laughs> I think it's a little too early for Christmas music. Nah. You don't think so? Nah, once Halloween is over, it's now Christmas time. My kid did threaten me as we speak to, as we spoke about my kid uh, mm. earlier in this segment. He did threaten me because I told him that I wasn't planning on putting up any decorations inside the house other than the outside we were going to put up uh, Fred the Snowman. 
to yeah. a big, you know, 15 foot snowman so that it's either being a pagan. he wanted to put up. So I told him, I said, we'll put up the snowman and we'll put the um, wreath on the door, the front door. But as far as like inside the house, ma, I'm out. Yeah. He was like, Pops, we got to have a tree. I'm like, for what? You don't get presents that go under trees anymore. He doesn't. He doesn't get Christmas gifts that go under a tree. The days of him running down the stairs and pajama sliding up to the Christmas tree are over. Aw. Can I buy you a tree off you? No. Because it's, it's a, it, um, the tree that I have is. A black lie is coming. No, it's not a black lie. I'm going to be a t- completely honest with you. The tree that I have is, is probably, I want to say, 10 years old. It just looks really new every year because of the treatment that I give it. Mm-hmm. So I would actually, you would be better off having the tree or buying the tree. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put anything up, and 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 I'm, but I will get a little small little table tree, mm-hmm. um, just to have in the house, just to appease him. But I'm, I, I have no reason to. Is the tree that you have a Douglas fir? Um, no, it's not a Douglas fir. Mm-hmm. It's one of those snow capped pines. The snow capped pine it has a little snow patches in it with the pine cones in it and stuff like that. But it only looked good because of what I did to it. So I would actually be doing you a disservice, DJ, if I gave you that tree. Um, so, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. The poor gets no tree this year. No, you and Tiny Tim don't get a tree. It's Tiny Tim. Really? We got to get out of here. I can't be in this room. I cannot be in this room with him anymore, Tim. Like, who's Tiny Tim, though? You really don't know who Tiny Tim is? Is it from the Christmas Carol? How I leave the show pissed. I got here pissed, and I'm leaving the show pissed. Well, consistency. That's, that's, that's the love. That's not consistency, DA. It's not. It's cons- actually. No, you just said you just said it. It is consistent, DA. It is. It's consistent, <laughs> DA. A consistent dumbass. I'm not, I'm not even gonna write that one. Yeah, down. don't even write that one down. You know what? Sticks. The one that you wrote down that he said, just cross it off. He won't get a title. You, you know what? Never want you me to get a title. Get a title this You're show a title for hater. as long as you live. As long That's as, fine. As long as you That's work fine. with me, you will never That's have a fine. title another day in your it's life. It's my MF and show anyway. It's not your show. You're not fat enough. Yeah, I'm getting there. Well, everybody, thank you so much for yeah, joining us Yeah, thanks for stopping by. It's been fun. <laughs> thanks for stopping by. AK-47, no follow. Because she knows, she knows where her bread is buttered. <laughs> I was like, look at this way. <laughs> High yellow over there. <laughs> He's looking fine as hell today, boy. Am I telling me no? Yep. All right, my apologies to Justin Bieber. We just plum ran out of time. Drop us a letter, comment, or question anytime to Fat Guy Radio Show at gmail.com or send us a gift. We love surprises to Box 41506, Phoenix, Arizona, 85080. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. YouTube Live as well. Look us up, subscribe, follow, and share. Tell everybody you know about the show. And when they ask you what's it all about, Simply reply, they'll make you laugh or depress the hell out of you, but you won't know until you listen. For Daniel Taylor. What's good? Doug the DA Andrew. Holla. And DJ Little D and Absentia. Yeah, buddy. I'm Corey Blaze reminding everybody. Skinny people. That's skinny skinny people, fat people. I know they're fat. That's not even in the script. That's why it threw me off. I really should put that back in the script because that sounds like something that should really be on a t-shirt. See you at the top. Good night. Holler. <laughs>